hello hello welcome back to my channel my name is Erin and today I wanted to just come on here and do this quick review um, it is I don't have that much time to do this because I have to, things to do today and it's extremely hot in my house right now because the air condition doesn't work upstairs so I'm trying to get this video quickly I just want to get this done so I can upload it later on so today I'm going to do a quick review of the stepfather 3 as part of my review of the whole trilogy um, the stepfather 3 is the last one of the original trilogy I believe so um, I'm just going to quickly review this. I watched it about two days ago, and I just want to give you guys um, my thoughts about it. So, The Stepfather 3, I have some information. Stepfather 3, Father's Day, is um, it was released to home video in 1992. It's an American slasher film directed by Guy Magger and starring William Whiteman and Priscilla Barnes. Um, it is the second sequel, obviously, to the 1970, uh, 1987 film of the stepfather and so this one is following the same serial killer that is the stepfather that's going around becoming the stepfather but this time he um goes to like this underground so the plot of this is basically let me give the background and plot he goes to this underground um like plastic surgeon and he gets his whole face um redone so he doesn't look the same anymore the stepfather looks doesn't look the same the original actor terry o'quinn who played in part one and two is replaced this time by again robert whiteman so i guess this was their way to explain why the stepfather looks different is that he went to this underground surgeon and he got his face changed okay not the most believable plot obviously but we are talking about a movie here so i'll go along with it um he goes and use plastic surgery to disguise his face and um he infiltrates another family so that's where we're at with this um we have the family with the mom patricia burns a uh, play played by patricia burns and we have the son um she has a son and her son is um a paraplegic so he her son is um in a wheelchair he can't walk and their explanation for that was that he got into an accident when his mom and dad got divorced and physically he should be able to walk but there's something psychological or something that she's taken him all this doctors and everybody and he physically should be able to walk but he's not so that's our kind of background now and everything so next we're going to go into talking about our characters here and do i like these characters in this movie Overall, I think the characters, the acting was not the best. I'm just put that out there right now. The acting was not the best, but I think that with what we were working with, it was, the, you know, the best we're going to get. I have to say the mom's acting was pretty good. Everybody else, to me, just felt a little bit off. A little bit off. Um, there was a sub, not like a subplot, but like in the movie as well, he's, um, once things don't go well with this first family that he's got married into and blah, 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 he starts dating this other lady who has a son as well um, because his ideal of a perfect family is not being realized with the first family he infiltrated. Now he starts dating this other woman and she has a son as well. And so that mom also, I thought her acting was pretty good as well. But I think it, something was just off with all the acting all together. Um, I think Robert Whiteman, who uh, does the role of the stepfather, his acting was like when he was doing the nice guy act i just wasn't buying it which he's not really a right nice guy but the acting just wasn't it wasn't there for me but when he was doing like the crazy parts i think it was a little bit more believable and the acting was a little bit better and maybe because he was trying to sort of copy what was done in the first two movies but i just the acting was really off the son's acting as well it was so just like um home movie-ish I don't know the acting just wasn't the wasn't the best um and so that's just a knockdown right there and then the plot of it is just kind of the same rehashing of the first two movies what was even the point of this um the only thing different was the plastic surgery aspect which is not even something majorly you know a part of the I mean that was the first thing in the plot so for me it just didn't bring anything really new to the plot it was basically the same as the first two movies just now we have a different face because he got plastic surgery i mean there was nothing different added in yeah he tries to start dating another lady but we saw that he was going to up and move in the sec in the first one when the family wasn't working out we already saw him trying to um get away from that family he was going to kill him so this is we already know this pattern and it's just not nothing new so for me it just was kind of like kind of boring in a, in a sense 
I mean, I was entertained the whole time. I wasn't bored. Like, so if you like the first two movies and you watch this, I don't think you're going to be necessarily, like, so bored or just not enjoy the movie. But I just don't think that there was anything super, like, new or innovative. If you're going to do a sequel, you've already done it twice, basically the same exact plot. There's nothing new here. Only things new is they try, you know, the, the kid is in a wheelchair, okay? His dad is remarried and they have a family, okay? But it's just nothing really new. It's the same plot. So... For me, plot-wise, story-wise, it just wasn't the strongest um, at all. So that moves on to our villain. So I'm going to talk about the villain in my reviews. Um, and I think, Rob, like I said, Robert White, White, Whiteman, I'm sorry, his acting just did not, it didn't persuade me at all. I just don't think the acting was up to, I mean, it, just, it wasn't the best and I'm, at all, in my opinion. Um, but when he was doing the more, like, bits of anger and doing the crazy parts it was more believable and I feel like it was just kind of like a rehashing of what Terry O'Quinn did in parts one and two though so I feel like it was kind of almost like he was doing a bit where he's playing the stepfather from like he's doing it the same exact way so I don't think it was anything special um he's still I mean the stepfather's still like scary it's still crazy that he's trying to kill his family all of that good stuff um, I still think as a villain, the character is pretty pretty solid, but it just didn't sell it to me in this third part at all. Um, and I just, I, yeah, I think Terry O'Quinn just had a little nudge over from the first two parts, and that's just my personal opinion, but I think it, it was okay. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. Um, I do say this, that when he was getting to the crazy parts, the bits of anger, it was portrayed pretty well, so... That's my personal opinion on the villain part of that. I would say maybe a mid, not a thumbs up, not a thumbs down, just right, right, right down the middle. And then lastly, my highlight scene hmm. for this movie. I think the highlight scene for me is probably the ending where we see um, this kid get um, up from his wheelchair to help his mom, and he. Like for his, it was very, it was kind of unbelievable in a, in a sense though, because then he just starts running. Like he, this kid's been in a wheelchair for how long, and now he's just running. But I think that was like a special moment that he got up and he's trying to help his mom and protect her from the stepfather. Um, and he just, you know, got the willpower to get up out the wheelchair. That I, I guess that's my highlight scene. Another scene I just thought about though that was pretty like awesome is when. There's this priest in the movie that is like good friends with the son and he's helping him try to figure out the real identity of the stepfather and um, the stepfather catches on and so he follows him. I don't, this is probably a spoiler, spoiler warning. So if you haven't seen this movie, maybe skip ahead, but he follows the father, again, spoiler warning. He follows the father and um, the priest and he um basically he kills him blah, blah blah and it's pretty a pretty awesome kill and he like pushes his car off of the the edge of the um cliff so that was a pretty awesome scene too but anyways let me i'm gonna wrap this up um this movie i just think it's just middle of the road it's not great it's not ter um terrible it's just kind of like meh a rehashing of similar storyline from one and two and just not that great of a performance from pretty much all of the cast except for like the two moms in the story. So for me, it just, just gets a, like, it's okay. Not a thumbs up, not a thumbs down. It's just okay. And yeah, that's all I have to say about it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like videos like this, reviews, but also I have some great makeup videos as well. Check the description box. I'll link some videos for you guys to watch. Um, definitely give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you would like to see more content. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Adios.